In this video, we're breaking down what makes a Linux distribution and why Linux distributions do not matter once you understand these fundamentals. So let's jump into this step process. I'm gonna walk you through what every single distribution does when it's installed and how it operates, how it looks, and how all these things are achieved and how you can pretty much pick up any distribution and modify it to your needs. So the very first thing is what kind of boot mode the distribution's gonna be on. Is it gonna be UEFI or is it gonna be legacy? And which one's better? Uh, honestly, I did an entire video. I'll link it up in the card up here, but it doesn't really matter on the whether it's legacy or UEFI. Newer laptops sometimes are locked into UEFI, so you can use that. Uh, however, if it, you know you're looking for the most simplistic approach and you have an option, I always recommend legacy just because it's so simplistic. So you get booted into your distribution that you're installing, and next up, the distribution will need to format the hard drive. Now, there's three different file systems you can put on your Linux distribution, and I'll kind of go over the basics of them. My absolute favorite one is ZFS. Now, this is a very difficult one and tricky to get going, but it is my favorite file system, and I'd be remiss if I did not mention it in this video. However, it still has a ways to go. There's a project called OpenZFS that's kind of trying to bring it into Linux, uh, because right now in the enterprise realm, ZFS rules all of the SANs out on the data centers and things of that nature, just because this file system is so awesome. However, it quite, hadn't quite made it in the individual Linux distributions. Just know that that is probably in the future. I hope to see that probably in the next five years. That would be sweet. Some really hobbyists out there have gone ahead and tweaked and it made this install on certain distributions. So if that interests to you, definitely check that out. However, the next one is gonna be BetterFS. Uh, it is actually a very, very good file system. However, it had a very rough beginning. So you're gonna see some posts that say, hey, this thing sucks, and some say it's just completely awesome. And the gist of this is every single Linux kernel that's coming out, every single improvement that's made upon it, typically has a line item about better FS. It improves its performance and it's just better as far as snapshotting and restoring certain file systems uh, when it comes back into uh, doing restoration. So uh, better FS is probably the future in the interim for Linux and then kind of have the de facto file system after BetterFS. The de facto file system that pretty much every single distribution out there defaults to and is the easiest to use and honestly has the best performance today is ext4. Now, ext4 is just an awesome rock solid file system. I have nothing to say for it. The only reason why BetterFS is in the picture is because of snapshots and some other little tweaks that it is doing. I think in the long term, it will be better. But right now, everything pretty much uses EXT4. So if you find yourself not knowing what to pick, pick EXT4. Now, as far as the default file system, I did mention there is still one distribution out there that chooses BetterFS by default, and that is going to be OpenSUSE keeps the better fs and actually institutes it by default so right now if you're kind of want to play around with better fs but you don't really know how to partition and do all that fancy stuff download the open SUSE distribution and you kind of kind of see some of the benefits and kind of check out how it does the partition tables and things like that if you have a junk computer laying around that you don't mind wiping out to test all these things so you have your boot mode picked, you have your file system checked. Let's go ahead and move on to the very third thing, which is gonna be the package manager. Which package manager is the best package manager out there? Oh, this is such a heated conversation. This is really where you get into the different distributions. Now, I only want to touch on three different types right now. There's Debian-based, which is APT, which I don't personally like that much, but when you complement it with things like Aptitude, which I did a video about, I'll link that up here, but uh, it is not a bad package manager by any means. I really do like 
a lot of aspects of APT. And if you're on a, a Debian-based system, such as Ubuntu, Linux Mint, Elementary, KDE, Neon, we could go on for a long time. There's a lot of Debian-based systems uh, as that use you know, APT as the package manager. So just know that uh, this is going to be pretty much the de facto package manager. Most people's first foray into Linux revolves around APT. So uh, if you're unsure which one you're doing, it's usually APT. As far as rail based or Red Hat, uh, CentOS, Scientific Linux, Fedora, that's gonna be this entire package manager of DNF and YUM. YUM and DNF are very, very alike in a lot of ways. DNF is just a little bit better at like resolving dependencies and things like that, but it's not quite fully baked yet. I think it comes by default on Fedora, but as far as CentOS, Arel, and then also Scientific Linux, they all use YUM still. Uh, that's why I kind of baked these two together because their syntax is identical to one another and they're all in the same family for package managers and distributions as that goes i like them pretty good i they're not my favorite i i like it a little bit better than apt uh it's kind of just in that same wheelhouse probably just because it's one of my very first systems that I mess with in business and I know it quite well. Then the third one I talked about is my actual personal favorite is Zipper. And this comes with OpenSUSE and it is a very, very good package manager. The reason why I like it the best is the syntax on it is beautiful. You pretty much just think of whatever you're trying to do and that is the, gonna be your command. You know, zipper, install, and then the package zipper purge the package zipper update that's i mean it's all kind of right there now apt's all kind of very similar apt also has a really good syntax like zipper but zipper has just a little bit of an edge on apt in my opinion however it is not a very popular package manager by any means uh, i just kind of really loved my time with OpenSUSE just because of this package manager and the last one I wanted to talk about today, and probably my least liked package manager, is Pac-Man. And this is from Arch and Arch-based systems. Uh, I kind of did not like Pac-Man just because a lot of the GUI package managers out there, I had an issue with an actual upgrade that bricked my system uh, until I had to do an actual restore because of a crash that happened during an update. Uh, and also Pac-Man gets real finicky where it'll start failing out if you don't update your system regularly. If you go like, let's say a month without ever doing any kind of updating of the cache or the databases or doing any kind of plugin or program installations using Pac-Man. Pac-Man does like to fail until you actually flush that cache and refresh your databases, which uh, I don't really like that just because, you know, it's constantly the maintenance aspect of Pac-Man. However, there is a lot of things that come with Pac-Man and Arch-based installs that is just absolutely fantastic. Obviously, the AUR and the vast array of programs that are at your fingertips is second to none and that's why a lot of people love arch is all about using the pac-man package manager and also the aur which is the arch user repository uh, those things are both very powerful when installing programs but that pretty much wraps up package management in linux based installations next up is the display server or renderer now what this is is wayland and xorg those are really your only two options there's only one distribution that i know of that defaults to wayland uh, it is said to be the future of display rendering and fedora puts this on by default it is the only distribution that i know of that does it by default i'm sure there's some obscure ones that do it as well but fedora is the only mainline distribution out there that i know uses wayland by default i personally tried it and had a lot of issues so i went into my fedora install disabled wayland and moved over to xorg if you have this problem uh, i highly recommend checking out this video up here i go over the difference between wayland and xorg and how to disable wayland and enable xorg if you're on a fedora based installation 
Now that said, XORG is pretty much the de facto standard for today's video uh, and today's thing. So if you're in early 2019 and you're using Wayland, you're probably gonna have some issues. Some people say they actually don't have issues, but I find most of these users are just using like an Intel card and everything's baked in. But uh, I personally use an external AMD graphics card that did not play nice with Wayland at all and I disabled it and I now use Xorg and if I went back to Fedora, which in the future I may, uh, you definitely will see me disable Wayland first thing and push it to Xorg. So to recap here, we have our boot mode, our disk partitioned, our package manager, and our display renderer. Once we've got these things in, we're ready to move on to the next thing, which is our display manager. And this basically manages our desktop environment that's gonna be going on our machine. And it kind of goes hand in hand with the desktop environment because most people that use our desktop environments is, you know, it, it depends on what you're choosing. Light DM is probably the biggest universal one that goes with the most desktop environments. However, if you're like using KDE, you're probably gonna end up using KDM. If you're using GNOME, it's probably gonna be GDM. Just look at your desktop environment that you really want to choose, and you probably wanna choose your display manager based on it. So let's get into actual desktop environments. What dictates that display manager? Uh, now, uh, I'm gonna go through these and just kind of show some screenshots of desktop environments. Now know that almost all of these desktop environments can be mix and matched. There, there can be a lot of customization that goes into almost every single one of these. You can make them all look beautiful, all respond in different ways. It's just the starting point and how you customize them varies from desktop environment to desktop environment. So very first off is gonna be KDE, my absolute favorite. However, it is by far the biggest out of this list and is very, very bloated, but I still love it. I love the look and feel and customizability of KDE. Next up is Cinnamon. If you're a Linux Mint user, you probably would figure out that this is gonna be one of my firsts on the list because it has a Windows look and feel almost out of the box. A lot of Windows users love this coming into Linux. Next up is gonna be Mate or Mate. This is a very, very good desktop environment. A lot of vets love Mate just because it is one, a very sleek, good looking system and it has a pretty relatively low footprint. Keep this in mind when choosing your desktop environment. Fourth on my list is gonna be Gnome. Uh, Gnome is a very, very good, good one. It, it's the default for Ubuntu and many distributions out there. I believe Fedora also uses GNOME by default and it is highly customizable. Now me personally, I hate the way it looks out of the box. So I usually do a variety of customizations. I actually created an entire script to customize it to my needs. Now I have that and I'll actually put that on, check the links below because on my GitHub, that is where I have the project for the layout manager to kind of change the look and feel of GNOME just so you have a better uh, experience with it. Next up is gonna be XFCE, my absolute favorite lightweight desktop environment. It is fantastic. I absolutely love XFC because it's so lightweight and you can customize it to do pretty much anything you want. So if I'm slightly concerned about the bloat of my system, I definitely will be choosing XFCE first thing and then doing customizations on it. Or if I'm just looking for maximum performance, XFCE is kind of my de facto desktop environment. And lastly is gonna be LXDE, and this stands for Lightweight Desktop Environment. Now, I already said how lightweight XFCE is, LXDE takes it to the extreme. Now, if you have like, let's say a 20 year old computer and you needed to load Linux on it, LXDE is probably the desktop environment for you because it literally takes maybe 128 megs of memory or just something just ridiculously small. Now, I still install LXDE on almost all my distributions just because whenever I do remoting in and I wanna launch into a desktop environment 
and a remote terminal somewhere, LXDE is so easy to pipe through to that remote terminal that uh, when doing remote software controls, LXDE is very valuable just because of how lightweight it is. Uh, so there's a good practical application for it in today's environment. And some people have taken this to the extreme and tweaked it out and made it look very sexy, but I have not done that yet. My main purpose for LXDE is, like I said, remote desktop. Now, I could sit here all day and go over all the desktop environments, but I do want to mention three that I don't have screenshots for that I absolutely love and just look fantastic. They're very new to the Linux community and relatively speaking to the ones I've just mentioned, but don't discount them because they are fantastic. There's Bungie, Enlightenment for the elementary project, I believe, and then my last one, Deep In Desktop Environment, which I absolutely love. I have that loaded on my laptop and God, it looks beautiful. It does a great things with display scaling and other aspects that just make a very sleek and intuitive interface. Those three are fantastic. Definitely check them out. Uh, I didn't actually put screenshots in this one just because this video is getting a little long and I didn't want to make it all about the desktop environments. And I just kind of want to break down what all of these are made of so you get an idea of, hey, if you want your Linux to look differently, maybe you should just switch your desktop environment. Or let's say you're having display rendering issues. Maybe you should check out Wayland or go from Wayland to Xorg. And you can kind of sit here and understand how these Linux distributions are constructed. And using these, you can get a blueprint of how to fix pretty much any Linux distribution. And that's why I say Linux distributions don't matter. Now, how they do matter is your starting point. As a newbie on the scene, a Linux distribution probably does matter to you because you need a starting point that you're familiar with. That's why I always say start with Linux Mint because most people are Windows users coming to Linux and Linux Mint Cinnamon has probably the best uh, out of box Windows experience or Windows-esque experiences. And that's why I always recommend it to pretty much any new user coming to Linux. But uh, that is pretty much it for today's video, guys. Let me know what I missed in the comments section below, and I'll see you in the next video.